Grab those lab coats and goggles, scientists, as we explore the roles of organisms and how energy flows amongst them. Let's look at our essential questions first. Now, let's talk about our essential question. Remember, essential questions in science and in different lessons can help us think about what we already know about a topic, and it helps us connect to new ideas that we're going to learn today to help us produce a new, produce a new thought about the topic. Our essential questions will be focused on our different science topic, topics. So look for keywords. In those keywords, the minute you see them and recognize them, I want you to think, what do I already know about this topic? Once you have that in your mind, you want to look at the question again to see what we're trying to answer today or what are we trying to answer about that topic. It's important to remember that an essential question is like a goal as well. By the end of our science lesson, you should confidently be able to answer the essential question. Let's go over our essential question for today. Listen as I read the first one. From what source do all food webs get their energy? Read that one with me. From what source do all food webs get their energy? The second one, what are the different parts of a food web? Read that one with me. What are the different parts of a food web? And our last one, how does the energy flow from one organism to the next in a food web? Read that one with me. How does the energy flow from one organism to the next in a food web? Our first activity for today is called leafy art, and here's how it's going to work. You are going to collect the materials you see on the screen, including a paper, crayons, and different types of leaves. Now, where do you get those leaves from? You're going to need to head outside with your teacher to collect a few leaves or blades of grass to make your leaf rubbings or to make our design for this activity. After you collect all of the supplies, you'll do the following three steps. You'll lay your leaves down flat on a table. You'll place your piece of paper over your leaves and get your crayons ready. You'll press on your paper nice and tight, and you'll use your crayon to go lightly over top of your leaves. You might need to put a little bit of pressure, but don't press too hard. When you're done doing this, you'll have your leafy art design. After you make your different images of leafy art, hang them up in the classroom to create a scene or ecosystem from your outside leaf rubbings drawings. Think about too, all of these different pictures and image you got, you got to collect from outside came from all different types of plants. How do those plants make their own food just hanging out outside if no one tends to them? Think about that as you explore and collect your plants and then as you hang up your pictures, once you have your pictures all completed, come back and I'll explain the next activity. All right, scientists, today we're going to explore more with food webs and em energy. This is going to be broken down into two different parts. Our first part is going to be called class food web. Let me explain how that will work. Here's how part one of this activity will work. Part one is called the class food web. This is gonna be broken down into five different steps. First, you're going to explore an outdoor habitat with your class. To do this, you're going to use your student journal to write down any organisms that you find. You're then going to classify each organism into either a decomposer, a producer, or a consumer. After you collect all that information, you're heading back in the classroom Well, you will create a food chain on the bottom part of your student journal, beginning with the sun and explaining how it relates to a larger food web. You're going to follow your teacher's directions in creating this class food web. Go ahead and complete part one of this activity and then come back and I'll explain more about part two. Part two of this activity is called habitats. How this will work is you will look at your habitat card given to you with your assigned groups. The second step is going to be begin brainstorming the different organisms that live in your assigned habitat. The third step will be record your ideas by writing these organisms under the correct categories in your student journals. 
four. Step four is to draw a simple food chain of organisms found in your specific habitat, beginning with the sun, and explain how it relates to a larger food web. Be sure to include the main source of energy in your chain. And your last step is create a food web of organisms in your habitat on your student journal. Be sure to show how energy flows from the sun through different food chains in the food web. So the basics of these two activities is making a class food web using the information that you find outside your classrooms and then also making a food web for a specific habitat that might not be the same as your classroom but gives you an idea of how different food webs survive in different areas and how they might be similar. Good luck with these activities, scientists, and I'll see you guys soon.